Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about distinguishing factors. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, in your opinion is the distinguishing factor of what differentiates a star programmer from a mediocre programmer their knowledge of design patterns and computer science questions slash data structures slash algorithms no it is not so the thing that I use to determine the difference between a mediocre programmer and a uh, in a star rock star or like a star programmer is in their it's usually it's one main thing there are many factors like experience and so forth and so forth on but on average there is one very key thing that makes me differentiate between a a programmers how do I put this in a good way so the difficult part when it comes to determining a good or a mediocre software developer is that it has to do a little bit with the level you're talking about so for example there are certain considerations to make when you talk to a junior software developer if you have a mediocre junior up to a master like a a star software uh, junior programmer just as you have a mid-level versus senior versus etc etc so uh, let me just kind of walk you through how I usually determine one over the other at the different levels. So if I talk to a junior level software developer, now I know that a mediocre junior software developer, like any junior software developer, will have a certain set of base knowledge. And sure, we can mm, do the easy thing here and say that the more you know, the more you know, the better you are. But the reality is that we also have to remember that a person who has a junior level will not be able, in any meaningful way, to know the same sort of things as a senior. So there's this, like, there's a limit to how much you can just look at how much a person knows because there's a cap on the whole thing if that makes sense like I've never guys I've never met a junior level software developer who was going to be able to perform at the seniors level it's not gonna happen simply because the time it takes to become a real senior software developer is too great it takes too much time so how do we then differentiate between a good junior or like a mediocre junior and a skilled one well it's actually in my opinion very simple because it can't just be down to how many tools have you studied how many th or this or that because we simply we know that that is a factor but it's not the most determining factor the most determining factor is what level of aptitude do you have for solving problems now what I mean by that is basically that a average junior will basically not be able to work independently in any meaningful well, ma meaningful way. You can basically not give a junior software developer any type of responsibilities or anything like that. So the thing that determines how good, like a really good junior from a mediocre one, is their one part is of course their aptitude, as I was saying, but it's not just that, it is their ability to absorb new concepts. How quickly do they adopt something? How driven are they to and motivated are they to actually learn more and expand their knowledge? How long does it take me to train this person? And that is something that is usually found in the passion of the per person with a con in tandem with what their depth of their understanding is of the thing that they have actually learned. So some juniors think that, you know, just learning a lot of tools is going to make them stand out. No. Only to an ignorant uh, employer that's going to make a difference because I can tell you right now, guys, I've seen many junior software developers pro CVs and it lists every tool between here and the sun and they never get through the process because they don't actually know the things that they have listed. They have taken an introduction and then they think that that's it, right? But the reality is that nobody cares how many tools you know. They care about that you can produce results. To the tools are just a means to an end. And so if you don't actually know how to use the tools to meet those, like to, to, to deliver on the value that they are supposed to give you, you're, it's, it's not really useful, right? 
So that is the way that I look at juniors. It's just how fast are they going to adopt new concepts? How likely are they to like really learn and quickly become productive? When it comes to mediocre mid levels versus more like the really good mid level software developers. I usually look at how much uh, how much trust I can put in them. How autonomous are they going to be able uh, able to be? How easy will it be for how, how much delegation can I make to this individual? Because the media, like an average mid-level software developer, will not be able to actually solve any problem apart from the story specification that they are given. This is where you usually see a very big difference between the startup software developers and the corporate software developers where the and this is in a sense at least in this aspect I prefer working with startup software developers because the startup software developer if I tell you here is this very loose specification with a lot of holes in it you're gonna have to go and talk to some people figure out the specifics and then build this thing by yourself they will be able to do that. The corporate, depending now, because I don't want to label people corporate or like so forth, but I hope that you get, sort of get what I'm going for. The average mediocre corporate software developer who doesn't really have the ability to do that sort of problem solving, they will just kind of sit there and not be able to actually do anything because it's not like because they they won't like they don't have any personal drive to actually go and fix anything. They just sit and wait until you give them something to do, and that's that is. There is a place for people like that, but it's a mediocre programmer because the reality is that you will never get this person to actually produce anything apart from the bare minimum. They can be really good and like have a lot of skill and so forth. We assume now like that their understanding of software concepts is sort of on par with each other, but they're never going to be like that really productive super software developer. And lastly, it's when we come down to the seniors and so forth. Uh, the difference between a mid-level senior and a really experienced senior is usually that the really, really good seniors, they are able to to solve the entire... Pro they, they are basically a guarantee that everything is going to work out. That is in essence what it is. Their, their understanding is so wide and so in-depth that they can maneuver in basically any a, in any situation. They're like the... They're basically... I mean, if you have a senior, let's take a senior front-end developer. A senior front-end developer is a full-stack developer. That is what, uh, per my definition, that is the like a real a mediocre front-end developer is like a joke, uh, or a mediocre senior fr uh, senior front-end developer. It's a, it is a joke person to me because all they actually know how to do is to do the front-end part. But in a real software project, that is not what you do. In a real software project, there's like dynamic problems. There are things that have way more complexity than knowing a design pattern or knowing a data structure or an algorithm. It's problem solving. It's a very dynamic e ecosystem when you work in IT. And sometimes you can solve the problem through talking to people. Sometimes you have to go and like write some type of custom code, so forth and so forth. Guys, I still have to this day never met a quote unquote senior front end developer who's even written like. A, you know their own lint rule or like they most of them don't even know how to configure a webpack configuration and same thing for the backend like the quote-unquote senior so senior backend developers who like they they don't even know what a unit test is or rather they, they don't actually do any of that stuff right these are the mediocre ones these are the ones who knows how to do some code but the really good ones they have a very deep understanding not just about their little slice of the problem they understand the whole area that is necessary to understand in order to deliver software. That is what, like, the really, that's how I, the star programmers are, are as I like to say, they're at real problem solvers. And when you meet an average software developer and you meet a really a big rock star, you, you will notice because the mediocre software developer doesn't actually know much apart from their little slice of the stack. The really big rockstar programmers, they will solve your problem. So what I want you to take away from this is that the way that I differentiate, like the main factors are actually not how good they are at design patterns or data structures and algorithms, guys, because these are just tools to solve problems. The average software developer is a person who will be able to do what you, they are told to do. 
but the really good star programmers they are the people who will be able to do as they are told but they will also be able to actually identify other ways of helping out or they will be able to handle just being told like a really loose specification and then kind of fill in the blanks themselves you don't have to do a lot of hand holding with these people and you can trust that they will take concrete action and actually solve real problems as they are found these are the really great software developers that everybody wants to hire and they are at all levels like the junior all the way up to seniors it's just very very difficult uh, to find these people and I go as far as to say that uh, the only real way you can figure out if you have such a person or not is in a personal interview because usually when you talk to a person who is like really outstanding they will have a uh, very broad understanding of a lot of concepts and they're going to be able to uh, to give you a, a give you a really really great introduction to their thought process about very concrete things that they have fixed around you know around the companies that they have been in uh, as they progress through their career juniors have a harder time to do this sort of thing of course because they have less experience but usually you find that it's usually very easy to see that this person is actually pretty good for their level and they also have a lot of drive and passion and they actually go and learn things by themselves they're actually self they're they're motivating themselves they're continuously trying to be get better these are the people that you're looking for if you want to like find someone who's really like a little bit extra good and for the mid levels it's the same sort of thing are these uh, is a mid the mid level software developer who only does what the story card tells them that's a mediocre software developer usually but the software developer who can actually take on responsibility and you can actually sort of trust that they're going to produce good code really good code and they're also going to be able to actually figure out where the misses in specifications are these are the ones that you want these are the best software developers at least i've found to work with have a great day